Hello there, fellow human, and today I want to take you on a little journey on how statistics can be very deceiving and how, at the end of the day, the only person that can find out whether a tank is right for you or not is you personally. Now, we're going to have a look at the Indian Panzer, because if you would look at some statistics websites, this is one of, if not the, worst performing tank by win rate. But is it actually that bad? Well, we're going to have a look at the statistics and the armor of this vehicle later. But now I want to focus a little bit on stats in the game in general. Right? Because here's the thing. If you go on Blitz Stars, for example, 45 to 55% is the range of players that are measured when you look at those win rate numbers. Which means it is an incomplete data set. Which means you can already throw it into a bin. Now, here's the thing. If you're playing this game purely for stats, please don't. It's a very terrible idea and you should never just play a game for stats. If you're not having fun, just just quit. If you're unless you're having fun getting good stats, then you're having fun and that's the whole point. But if you're just playing to st for stats and you're not having fun, just quit. Find something that's actually enjoyable because this is not supposed to be your life. You got to do something that you enjoy, right? That's what's important. So that is number one. And number two is that stats aren't the deciding factor in a lot of cases, right? Because if you look at a vehicle and uh, you look at its raw statistics, they can be very helpful. Like, for example, if you look at DPM, you look at the aim time, you look at the armor, those are all going to be very useful metrics in the battle. However, sometimes those vehicles translate towards performance quite a lot differently. Like, for example, you have the tier 10 of this very tech tree, the Leopard 1. Outstanding DPM as of now. Well, it's probably not going to get nerfed as much, but it might still be. So, outstanding DPM, outstanding mobility, incredibly accurate gun, however, no armor whatsoever. So, a vehicle like that will translate its stats towards game performance a lot different than, for example, a mouse. Because a mouse has a terrible gun, has terrible mobility, but it has very thick armor. So a mouse has going to be naturally a higher play of win rate than a Leopard 1, because it is a lot easier to play and it requires a lot less player input to extract those statistics out of the vehicle. So while a terrible player is going to struggle in something like an Indian Panzer or a RU251, which is the alternative to get the Leopard, they might do a lot better in a tank that's easy. Like a mouse, like an E100. Because what those tanks can do, they can stay alive by themselves. You have to keep the Leopard alive to, for example, by not getting shot. Because if you get shot, you get penned immediately. The E100 can keep itself alive a lot longer by simply having a lot of armor and a lot more hit points. So if you're playing one of those vehicles, you're tend to gonna stay alive for longer. Therefore, you're gonna have a bigger chance at getting a shot and then winning the battle. So when you look at statistics, you always have to look at how they translate from the tank stats to the actual player stats in the end. Because if you don't do that, you're probably going to end up playing the mouse 24-7 because you go on Blitz Stars and realize it has the highest win out of the 10s. And that's really the point, is it? Now obviously, like a Leopard, like an Object 140, the reason why their win rates tend to be so much lower because the average player is struggling to extract that performance out of these vehicles. Which doesn't mean that they're terrible vehicles, even though I remember the old Object 140 and it now is in a very sorry state. It does mean that you should start with the vehicles that are easier to extract performance out of. And as you get better in the game, you eventually move on towards the vehicles that are better most of the time, but are more difficult to extract the performance out of. And if we look at the performance of the Indian Panzer, if we have a look at the Indian Panzer statistics, it does have good DPM and good penetration at 259 on the premium rounds and 212 on the standard, something that the Panther II, for example, can't match, and it also has lower DPM. And the other way to get to the Leopard 1, the IU-251, has slightly less DPM, 180 
standard penetration, but it does have heat rounds that have 250 premium. So the Indian has clearly the better gun right here. Now, in the weapon handling department, it has a slightly worse uh, dispersion, but uh, you, you're not going to notice the difference between this. You're also not really going to notice the difference between 0.3 and 0.32 either. So the weapon handling is going to be very similar among these vehicles. However, the Indian Panzer again has better aim time than the IA-251 right here. Then we get to the problem area of this vehicle, however, and that is the movement, because it is slower, somehow, than the Panther II, and obviously significantly slower than the massively agile IU-251. So that is one of the very big downsides of this vehicle, that it isn't quite as agile, even in the traverse speed, when you have 33 degrees, while the Panther has 43. Only something like the P-44 Pantera has equally terrible traverse right here, while a vehicle like the T44-100 even has 51 degrees right here. I mean, camouflage isn't really that important, but it does have a lot worse than the IO-201, of course. But how does it end up being that the win rate down here is quite a lot lower than that of the IO-251? Well, first of all, these win rates down here don't mean about anything, really. So if you go by these, you're not really going to have a great time. So just remember that without knowing the big picture of all these numbers, you actually know less after looking at the number than you did before. So, we have to understand the large picture here, and that is already what I explained earlier, and that is the how do the tank stats actually translate into player stats, like what do you have to do to make the tank stats work for you in battle? And that is what you have to do with the Indian Panzer right here, because you do have quite a good gun. You have solid penetration, you have very high DPM for a vehicle of this type that you probably don't see otherwise. And you don't really have good mobility, you don't really have good armor, and that is kind of what it comes down to, right? If you don't have a lot of armor, and you don't really have the best of mobility, I mean, let's be honest, it's fine enough. If you don't have that good mobility, you have to be very careful with how you position this vehicle on the map. And the average player tends to be a lot worse at good positioning than simply taking a mouse or taking an i7 and putting it somewhere and then having the enemy bounce off it quite a couple of times. So vehicles like this suffer more from the player than they do suffer from their own stats. So is this the worst tank in the game? No, it isn't. Because such as the worst tank in the game it doesn't really exist besides the Sheridan missile, right? There are always going to be variances of tanks that are stronger, like a Tieft 4A2. Like, nobody's going to argue that a Indian Panzer is anywhere near the level of a Tieft 4A2. Of course, nobody would ever do that. But at the same time, if you're a very good player, you can overcome a lot of the downsides that vehicles like this one have and extract the performance that they do inherently have to get better games and more win rate and damage if that's what you care about. However, at the same time, it is not a tank that is nowhere near as good as, for example, a Centurion 5-1 as well. However, those differences in the grand scheme of things are quite small when you compare the tank differences to the player differences, like the difference between the worst tier rate medium and the best tier rate medium is maybe 10 to 15 percent in terms of performance but the difference between the best and worst tier 8 medium tank player oh boy that difference is absolutely massive it is about as massive as the lack of armor that this vehicle actually has so let's now have a look at uh, how well that is going in the armor department, the Indian Panzer has really nothing to show for. I mean, the lower plate is a weak spot, the upper plate is a weak spot. The sides are quite weak at 60mm. They are somewhat angled inwards, which could be useful in side scraping, but not really, because as soon as you turn the vehicle just a little bit, it becomes immediately useless. Obviously, don't shoot at the side of any vehicle at an extreme angle like this. I don't think I need to even tell you that, but basically, if someone shoots at you from here, you're going to be fine. However... 8 degrees, 10 degrees of gun depression. Can you get some hull down action going on because you have turret armor? Nope, you don't actually have any turret armor. You can get penned through the sides of the turret quite easily. And even the gun mantlet itself, which looks very thin, but I wouldn't recommend shooting at it anyway because it, the shell can get caught in all sorts of things in there. So while the turret armor is quite thin, just 
just shoot at this vehicle anywhere, really. I mean, I would personally avoid the gun mantle just to be sure because RNG things can happen. Or avoid extreme angles like on any other vehicle in the entire game, even a bat chat. But basically, as soon as you're shooting at a flat plate on this vehicle or the side of the turret, it is absolute butter. So what is important and that you should take away from this video, and that is you can stare at stats all you want. They are never gonna give you the complete picture unless you understand the complete picture already, right? Because this vehicle might be on paper one of the worst win rate tanks in the game, but that does not mean that if you choose to play it and you're a already decent player that you can't get 55% win rate out of this easily. Doesn't mean that whatsoever. Obviously, that is what experiments are for. At the start of your Blitz journey, you should go for vehicles where extracting performance is easy. Well, armored heavy tanks, ideally not too slow. 60 TP line is a great starting there. The E50M, for example, would be a great starting tier 10 medium because it does have that armor to still protect you because armor is the noob skill, as I've said for quite a lot of years now, that the more armor a tank has, the easier it becomes to survive in it, and the longer you stay alive, the more chances you tend to have to actually shoot at the enemy. Right? The more engagements you survive, the more engagements you can enter. Even if you lose most of your engagement, if you can enter more, you're gonna do more damage by default in a way. So basically, boil down the stats, not just to what the number says, but also to why the number is there in the first place. That's the important thing right there. And now, I'm also working on a lot bigger piece about World of Tanks Blitz statistics and how playing World of Tanks Blitz is really very complicated if you boil it down. And honestly, you don't need to know all of that. So that's why I'm gonna make this video to sum up. Basically, understand that whenever you look at a number, when you look at a DPM, you look at a penetration, you look at an armor level, that it is just a number. And the real important thing about that number is not what the number is, but what it does on the battlefield. You can have 7,000 DPM, but if you have 7 penetration, the tank is useless. So remember, the things work only in the big picture.